Pixar movie tiers. I mean, not Pixar. Marvel movie tiers. We did, we did that Pixar. Twice. So I have five tiers, Ricky Flex. Tell me what you think about these tiers. I have a God tier for like, okay, these are like the untouchables. These are basically the ones in the rafters. These are the ones, the, almost like, it's almost like universally recognized. Like yeah. Universal, like Mount Rushmore. I have four on Mount Rushmore here. Uh, one borderline that we'll get to argue. Uh, so basically God tier. I then have the Hall of Fame as the next tier. Uh, basically, that are great movies. They're not like the first ones you might recommend to somebody because like there's just such – this is obviously spanning 29 movies. Some bring together everything so well. And like something the Marvel Cinematic Universe, specifically the Russo Brothers have done, is like bring together this universe – and like have all these different characters somehow coincide into one picture and all these arcs kind of coincide to one picture. Uh, beyond Hall of Fame, I have good. I, I named this the All-Stars, okay? So maybe they were like a five-time All-Star, okay? Not yet making the Hall of Fame, but they're definitely a pleasurable watch. I then have the Solid, which is more like the meh, right? Likely I will never return to, like I'll never choose to return to compared to what's in the – Hall of Fame or God tier, but ones that I had a solid time at the theater with. And then I have the rejects as the last one. So, all right. I gotcha. I have five as well, but I think my, my limitations were a little different here. So like the God tier, can there only be four? No, there can be, no, I, I have potentially five. I've one That's a borderline one. Okay. Is there a minimum for a category? No, no. I think we're just tier based on what we are given and what we think about these movies. Okay. And I think it's easy. Thing. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, you go. You go. I get uh, no, I, 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 we're going to go top down. We're going to start at the God tier, then go down. I think. I think. Okay, that'd be I was going to ask, do we go by phases? I, I think it'd be easier if we just went by okay, okay. like the, the God tier. Or like, oh, do you want it to go? So do you have the movies in order right now? I do. Do you have that up? Okay, let's yeah, let's do that. Let's go. Let's go chronologically from release. So we're starting off with 2008's Iron Man. That is correct. I have it in the God tier. Put it in the God tier. It's the God tier. It's the best solo adventure in the history of the MCU. It got everything started. Arguably, I would say the best performance by an MCU hero with Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Um, a movie that kickstarted like maybe the greatest run by an actor as a superhero i'm sorry um hugh jackman but this belongs to robert daddy jr's iron man like this rejuvenated his career it is one of the re most rewatchable of all these marvel movies um it's the best one from like the Mar uh, from the iron man trilogy that came out and uh, i think without this movie the mcu is not possible so i think it almost definitely belongs to the god tier agreed well said so iron man also in 08 technically an mcu movie the incredible hulk i'll, I'll tell you what i have this in the rejects I, I had this as a borderline solid to rejects because if you look at the other rejects potentially here it is significantly better than the rejects but if you look at the solids it's like it's not as good as the solids i it's think it's a border I think it's a reject, mainly because this is one that, first of all, it's not the Bruce Banner played by Mark Ruffalo. We get Edward Norton. It's kind of like a black mark on the MCU. They have Robert Downey Jr. show up in the post credit scene, and they show that there is connectivity between these two movies, between Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk. Uh, I have not returned to this movie in so long. I just feel like it's not one that fans are... I think that's a big part about this universe. Like some of these, a lot of these movies get so much cable time, Disney plus, right? Whatever streaming service. I think the incredible Hulk wasn't even always on Disney plus. I think it was also on other streaming services. I don't know if that was because of the rights to Hulk itself, but I just don't think it has that like relatability to the rest of the MCU. It just feels so separate and apart. I'm with you. Rejects. Rejects. Okay. Moving on. We're going to 2009, correct? There actually was a movie 2010. released yeah. in 2009. So shockingly, it's 2010 Iron Man 2. Interesting. Okay. So do you want to reveal where you have it and then I'll reveal where I have it? Sure. Where do you have Iron Man 2? 
it depends again like i actually was putting like limitations on these so i i put i i told myself i had had five rejects in the bottom so i had this as a reject but Thank i you. like i have this as an all-star wait what's all-star good yeah that's tier three all right so it's solid okay that, that that'd be the thing how we would obviously negotiate here I, but i want to i want to hear why you think it's a reject and i'll say why i think it's an all-star okay if we're not doing limitations then i would probably put it as a solid just for the record i think that yes i think sam rockwell is a great actor looking back on it it's like you now it's like oh he was pretty good but at the time it's like was he J justin hammer was he good like Looking back on it now, it's like, yeah, he was, but is, are you just getting caught up in the actor now? You're not sure. And then Ricky Works character, I don't know anymore. Looking back on it, I'm like, actually, he wasn't very good. It wasn't very Justin Hammer very is well. better than Mickey Rourke in this movie. Agreed. And then, like, there's a new Colonel Rose. I want my board. I want my War, board. Warhammer thrown into it. I don't know. I wasn't in love with it when I saw it, and I was a kid when I saw it. That also kind of throws me off a little bit. I do think it's significantly better than Iron Man 3, so I think it's solid. Barely. First off, I think Don Cheadle entering this universe as Rhodey, I think, improved this franchise. I also think the final battle with them going back-to-back -back and him and the War Machine, great. I love also the Nick Fury in this movie. Trying, like, I like the story for Tony Stark himself, how he's poisoning himself, and he has to like go through this journey where he has to create this new element in order to like live and uh the pressure that's put upon him i think he's all time cool in this movie like he still has like i think iron man 3 like tony stark isn't as cool as he is in iron man 2 and the first iron man he still has that swag to him um i love the f1 scene i think that's actually really cool with whiplash and i think that's maybe one of the best action sequences aside from like the back-to-back -back when tony stark's fighting with Rhodey. Justin Hammer, he's campy, but I'm still buying it. I still like it. I feel like he understood what he had to do with this movie. Hopefully, he shows Tony up. Tony Stark. Yeah, and he hopefully shows up in the Armor Wars series so we can get more Sam Rockwell. Um, I kind of have a bias towards Sam Rockwell. But I, I think saying. a big reason why I have it in the All-Star section is because I enjoy Iron Man 2 more than Iron Man 3. But again, that's like a bias, I think, like putting it, uh, comparing it to Iron Man 3, which let's just say it now. Are you saying Iron Man 3 is a, a better region. movie? Oh, you Iron Man think, 3 is a reject? Yeah. I, I know the uh, Rotten Tomato score will for sure disagree with me, I think. But I did not buy Guy Pierce in that movie. Did not buy the overcoming of the Avengers uh, 2012 movie for Tony Stark. Thought that was not very well done. Did not buy Iron Man 3. Okay. So did not let, like that movie at all. All right. I so think my guess on the Rotten Tomato score, by the way, is a 78. So, okay. Here's what we're doing. Iron Man 2 is what, probably like a 72, something like that? I don't know. I, I, my guess would probably Iron Man 2. I would guess like a 72, 73. 68. Yeah, that's what you think it is? Look it up right now. I bet I'm right. I thought you had it up. No. Iron Man 2 is a 72. Oh, wow. You had it right. So he's cert barely certified fresh, or is this in the red? Oh, I didn't check it. Hold on. It's okay. No, no, it's not a big deal. So we're going to put Iron Man 2 in the solid, right? We're not, we're not going to skip ahead yet to Iron Man 3. We still got some of the original Avenger movies, okay? So if we're looking at 2010, we then have to move to 2011 where we have the uh, solo debuts for both Thor and Captain America, the first Avenger. Where do you want to start? Thor came out before Captain America, so let's just do that, right? Yes, Thor. This gets a lot of hate. I like that movie. I remember walking out of the theater like, damn, that movie is awesome. Now looking back on it, I'm like, all right, that was good. That's where I think it should be. I think it's good. Loki's Solid? great. Or the third one. Oh, you think it's third? Yeah. Ooh, wow. And I think this is also what you were just doing with Iron Man 2 is what I'm doing with Thor. Because Thor the Dark World is a piece of trash. Lots of reject. So, we already know that's going to happen. So, But... I think this is a good like intro, like compared to like what we've gotten with Black Widow, Sh even Shang Chi, Eternals, like all these origin movies right now. I think this is better than those. And yes, it's a little campy, a little at times. Yes, like I, but I think it works. I do think it works. I think Kenneth Branagh's movie, I do think it works. 
And especially at the time, I remember just going back in time also, this was good. Kenneth Branagh, you're right. Shakespearean, you got the base, the debut of Loki, who's going to be eventually the first Avengers villain. I think you, you you would argue it's not even an argument actually. Loki was the best performance in the original Thor. Yeah. I don't so what love do you have Hems this as? I had it as solid, but I'm going to put it into good All Star just because I'm giving the benefits of the doubt because like you have to show respect to like the first solo adventures phase one where we were kicking off this universe and like that moment where thor breaks through hawkeye's first introduced as well and you have thor trying to grab the hammer you can't pick it up in the rain like chris hemsworth looking ripped the shreds and like the most jacked man alive and that that's one of the greatest scenes in the phase one of the mcu when he's tearing through a good that military option that that military that agent uh the shield operation and just getting to that moment to try and pick it up and he fails like very shakespearean like you could just like you could feel that in that moment one of the best phase one scenes yeah. so I'll, i'm good with putting it in all-star i'm okay with making it up i'm conceding to that so let's move on so we got first avenger next so this is where like my god tier is completely different than yours like my god tier i was thinking like pixar draft we had 10 so I have 10 in the God tier. Obviously, You're an I'll idiot. If you're putting, whoa, you cannot put no, Captain was, America's what? first Avenger in the God no, tier. Is no, that what no. you're about whoa, to tell whoa, me? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses there, man. Why would you even say that? Because now where I'm putting only five in God tier, now like the next five I had in the God tier are significantly above Captain America, like first Avenger. But I had that as like the second tier. So now I'm like debating. Now is it only good? It's a good. It's all star. It doesn't sound. It's it's a little bit better than Thor. Okay, so good. I'm yeah. fine with that. All right, yeah. I was just explaining my thought process. I thought here. you were about to say it's a god tier. I would have just <laughs> shut my laptop off. No. All I right. Was just first Avenger to and Thor. Sake of yeah. time, both good all stars. Yeah. Third tier. Now we're at the Avengers 2012. I have it at Hall of Fame. Ditto. We can move on. <laughs> right. Uh, just because, obviously, it was such a immaculate moment. And when you saw all those movies, like, resulting in this, like, obviously, conglomerate of characters that everyone had grown to, like, adore from their solo adventures. And you're throwing in Hawkeye with a more meaningful role, sort of. Black Widow with a more meaningful role after Iron Man 2. Um, Loki comes back. Loki comes back. We had the first introduction to Thanos at the end. Nick was, Fury, who is this big purple role. guy? Yes. Um, Coulson, impactful death. You know, I'm going to go definitely Hall of Fame. Right. Okay. So just to end, we just finished phase one. So what we Tier have two. now, what we have right now is nothing in God tier. The Hall of Fame. No, nope, we have Iron Man God tier. Oh, right. Forgot that one. I, I highlighted them here too. So Iron Man, okay. God tier, the Avengers in the second tier Hall of Fame. We have First Avenger and Thor as all stars. We got uh, Iron Man two in the solid category, which is tier four, and then rejects the Incredible Hulk. I think that's all correct so far. I agree. Next up, Iron Man three, two thousand thirteen. I have this in I I have this in solid. I don't think it's. I'm lit. fine moving it to solid. If Iron Man two is in solid, right? I think Iron Man three belongs in the same category. To be honest, I'm fine with it. Also, a great story. Like Iron, it's almost has like a Logan vibe a little bit, where he's out of the suit for a long time, has some grittiness to his character. Uh, don't love Guy Pierce in this movie. To be Neither honest, and Kingsley. Don't uh, we don't we don't like don't love Ben Kingsley in this movie. We know that. Oh, we don't love his character. We don't like the the, the decision made there. Uh felt like there was some villain issues of that movie. But for in terms of a character arc for Tony Stark, pretty good. So yes, solid. Moving on. Guardians or the Dark World. Oh, Dark World rejects. Rejects. I don't even think we need to say anything. It's it's clearly a reject. We can move on. If you don't agree with that, then maybe you need to reconsider watching superhero movies. And just plagued by, uh, all, once again, a villain issue, a very forgettable villain with Malekith. I can't even remember why he was a villain in that movie or what his motivations were. The, uh, the stuff. I know the, the red thing. Yeah. And that's why they had to go back. Yeah. And then Poison Jane. Yeah. 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 All that. 
Yeah. Okay. Moving on. We get it. Hello was supposed to be the villain. Hello was supposed to be the villain initially yes. in Dark yes. World. Which is so weird to think about now. But Lo moving Loki on. Died again. Yeah, and then Loki died again. Captain America Winter Soldier's next. I have it in the God tier. I have it in the God tier. I think this is arguably one of the greatest spy movies of all time. I think that Chris Evans proves that he's a good actor in this movie. I know I, Snowpiercer came out the year before, I want to say, um, where he was good. But like I think that the overall movie in that, like Bong Joon-ho's movie, is just so like because of him and the overall actual story. It's That's why it's so good. Winter Soldier, he is amazing. And the actual story is also great. Um, obviously, our boy Sebastian Stan, great in it. But this is Chris Evans. This is also Black Widow, good in this as well, and Anthony Mackie. But... This is Chris Evans. I love this movie. I love it also because it was such an upgrade from the first Avenger. The first Avenger is a classic war movie. You're rooting for the United States against the Nazis. Here, you start to question patriotism. What does it truly mean? You have a great, like almost like real feel, like espionage thriller to this movie. Winter Soldier, an incredible villain. An incredible villain. I think an underrated villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, we get introductions to Falcon as a result. We have Black Widow with an integral role to this movie. And you're right. This is, I think this is probably the best Chris Evans has ever been in the MCU. I think you can argue Endgame. He was even better. Uh, but I think, yeah, Winter Soldier definitely des deserves to be in the God tier. It's not, this is the one I have that's not like a, a team up or a solo, like a, like a, a ninja, initial solo movie. This is one I think that just, it's just a great movie even if it wasn't set in the mcu and it doesn't even have that many further implications other than the fact that it, it introduces new characters or reintroduces characters and this is the movie that i go back to where i'm like okay this is why every time the russo brothers have a new movie coming out and it's a spy movie potentially i'm looking at you gray the gray man i have high hope even though they aren't very good outside of the mcu and then particularly outside like like even with great actors just they're not very good but with this movie and then obviously we'll, we'll talk about it later i have high hopes for the gray man because of this movie in particular that elevator sequence the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the, the grabbing of the helicopter is that civil war yeah helicopter Ooh. civil war mm -hmm. um like where he grabs and he's like spreading his arms out like super wide uh yeah so no that was an easy one i think that to me that was easily got here all right this is going to be interesting guardians of the galaxy is next hall of fame Hall of Fame. And that's coming from like, that's like literally other than Infinity War, probably my favorite MCU movie. But I think I'm I'm doing this very unbiasedly in terms of, I don't think it's on the same level as Iron Man. It's not on the same level, level as Winter Soldier, Endgame or Infinity War. Like this is as good as it gets for technically a like MCU solo movie. That's why I'm putting it in the Hall of Fame. I think it's number one in the Hall of Fame. I think villain draws it back. I think looking back on it, it doesn't hit as hard. But to give it a pro, this changed the game. This allowed like Ragnarok to run. This allowed creative freedom to run in the MCU, I think. 100%. Like Ant-Man came out the next year, and we all know Edgar Wright. Or I think Ant-Man came out. Was it, was it the next year? Yeah, it was the next year. Um, Edgar Wright issues with that. So like this, like realizing the success of that, with this mute, the soundtrack, you know, creative freedom, everything. This was the ensemble, the ensemble again, but non core, like non core Avengers. Like, this is the Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody knew who they were. Unknown know? characters. Right. The, this was so big for Marvel and also just like in, for cinema in general. So I think that this is a central movie, but number one in the Hall of Fame, probably. Like the big, me. easily the biggest gamble early on in the MCU. And it paid off. It like it without. The Guardians of the Galaxy success, we don't get like the eventual team ups in Infinity War and Endgame that make the relationship with Thanos that much stronger. Gamora obviously means so much to audiences and Nebula. Peter Quill is one of the most recognizable MCU heroes to this point. We just saw him appear in Thor Love and Thunder. Drax, one of the funniest characters we've ever seen. Rocket paired with Gru as well. I think this one, like the music just changed it all. Like the it, it was this is uh, clearly the MCU putting their faith in James Gunn saying, okay, we're we like, and I think James Gunn to this point wasn't that reliable of a director. 
you know he he had some like i guess lower key hits ones not like huge blockbusters but they really put their faith in his vision for these characters and his passion for these characters very much paid off very much paid off it's at the top of the hall of fame nearly on in the god tier I'm literally yeah. thinking it might go god tier. <laughs> I'm just saying this. Well, we can adjust. We can. Adjust, I, I think. Moving. I think. I think we put it in the yellow right now for Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a fringe god tier. That's what I think we should do. Okay, moving on. That's in the fringe. Age of Ultron. Heaven, good. Yeah, All Star, good. Yes, third Is tier. It, all right, let's get this over with. Is it All Star tier or good tier? It's both. <laughs> okay. We call it All Star. It's a new God tier Hall of Fame All Star. Okay, right. All Star. I have it as All Star too. I think this is better than what people come to say. I also shit uh, crap on this movie a lot, but at the end of the day, this movie isn't bad. Like it's better than solid. So rewatchable. Very so rewatchable. rewatchable. I think James Spader's character Ultron is a big reason for that. I think the Thor storyline is very messed up. It obviously plays a part later on. I think it's very weird how Ultron comes to be, but. At the end of the day, the final battle sequence also is awesome, I think. Ultron is awesome. I think this movie is good as an it's all star. A, it's a great lead into Civil War as well. You start to see the division between Tony and Steve, right? Going in from this movie into Civil War, into like that ultimate divide that's gonna split them going into Avengers Endgame. Uh so I like Personally, like I love James Spader, and I think the introduction to Vision was very cool. We had such high hopes for Vision after this movie. Uh, yeah, easily for me. And we have the we have Ucl Ulysses Claw being introduced, kind of getting teased for Black Panther. For me, this is clearly an all star, and I don't think it deserves the hate. Yes, there is some like Chris Hemsworth, Thor, like interesting writing decisions, like some like like obviously uh, like uh, I guess holes in the plot, but watch rewatchability and also just entertainment wise, that first shot. Right, where like they're going and they do the freeze frame, the Joss Whedon freeze frame as they're going in, where you have like Hulk is Hulk, you have the Hulk busting suit that ends up making an appearance, but also the introduction of Wanda Maximoff and Quicksilver. Like, solid movie, solid movie. Next, solid or an all star. Oh, you're right, all star. Yeah, yeah. We can move well, it if we have to, but okay, finishing out phase two is Ant Man 2016. I have this in solid in the fourth. I have this. Okay, I have it as a solid too. That makes yes. it easy. Another villain issue. Another villain issue, I think. I wasn't particularly in love with the villain in this. Not bad, but solid. Felt a little formulaic. Uh, it was interesting because this comes out in 2015. Paul Rudd seemed like he's a seamless fit into the Guardians of the Galaxy, honestly. Uh, I think he does well in terms of like chemistry with Evangeline Lilly and um, Michael Douglas, but I think like Michael Pena and the squad kind of like steal the show in many scenes. Corey Stahl just seems like almost too prototypical as a villain. Uh, the Yellow Jacket. I, like Paul Rudd's great in this movie, but it's he's, he, Paul Rudd's not going to make this an all-star movie for me. Like I just Ant Man is also just not that integral of a character. Like the there's not much um, like uh, ramifications as a result of this movie, other than the fact that the post credit scene introduces like that Spider Man exists. Yeah, and like also Ant Man, like you said, not an integral character, but it's also like this isn't phase one. This is end of phase two. We're built like this is post two Avengers movies. Our expectations are higher now. It's a little different. I think Paul Rudd nails it. I think the crew around him is very good, uh, or good, I would say. But it's just nothing, I guess, memorable in this yeah. movie. Really, like it's just like you have the scene that almost feels like it's a joke when he's facing. Uh, Falcon trying to infiltrate Aven the Avengers compound, and it's like, okay, yeah, you're going. But they to brought the in Falcon. They like didn't the bring in I was, was going to say the lowest rate, like Avenger who just got initiated into the Avengers after Age of Ultron. Like, okay, I guess, like, it just doesn't. Did, it didn't feel. It's very much small in scale, and that that does matter when you're looking at these movies after 29, and it's all in the same continuity. Yeah, agreed. All right, Phase Three. This is where. This is the core this is the core this is where it gets good like this so, is where like you find out this is may, might be the best action franchise in the history of movies exactly and it starts out hot with captain america civil war i have it in the hall of fame i don't think it's a top five mcu movie and if we're doing a top five god tier it is not in the god tier 
I like, think there's got to be some. It, it's good, huh? There's there's got to be some exclusivity to the god tier. Like, yes, like I, I agree, I, I agree. It's and like the Hall of Fame reason. is the Hall of Fame. Like those, like these so, guys are still first ballots in my opinion. That's are they're in the Hall of Fame. They're not like the All Stars, which I think could be like okay, they're getting in their fifth or sixth ballot, right? Fifth, fifth or sixth year on the ballot. The Hall of Fames are like these are all time movies. They just don't crack the the best of the best. Like Captain America: Civil War. That I find I'm rewatching probably more so than any movie other than Endgame and potentially Ragnarok or Infinity War. Excuse me. I, I find that because it's on cable more. But then again, like Guardians is always on cable, and that it, Civil War that. did so much. It drives like the 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 rift between the Avengers. It introduces Black Panther. It introduces Spider Man. Right. It has the airport scene. Soviet Accords. Soviet so, Soviet Accords. Soviet. Jesus. Right. Uh, and then and the villain, like they showed, they can uh, have this huge rift between the Avengers and not have this almighty villain, all powerful villain that drives this wedge. Like it could just be an average person with the right motivations. Zemo, fascinating character, and then obviously you have Winter Soldier, right, as like an interesting piece to this entire puzzle. While it is basically an Avengers four movie. It still focuses on the story impressively of Captain America coming from like and also focusing on American patriotism. What does that mean coming from Winter Soldier? Like it still maintains that focus, which is impressive. Russo Brothers. Yeah, great movie. This is a, I remember like Team Cap, Team Iron Man. Like this is this had everything. Spider Man. Did we did you mention Spider Man? Yeah. Oh, I mentioned yeah, like, Spider Man Black Panther. Yes, but like unbelievable. I think Zemo. I think this makes him worthy. Like, I think he was good in this, um, but he had more potential, I think. But he was very good in his screen time. I think he, I think he was. And then also every, when we saw him in Falcon, the Winter Soldier series, it's like, oh, Zemo, let's go. Because he was so good in this. Uh, big fan of Civil War. But again, just Hall of Fame, not God's here. Uh, arguably the best fight sequence in the history of the MCU. I might just say it's the best. With Cap versus Iron Man with yeah. Bucky as the third guy. Right. I don't care. He killed my mom. Then they keep going at it. Right. Like it's like, that is an all time MCU YouTube moment where it's like, just look that scene up. And it's just, and then it was that moment in the trailer with like the light and the framing of that exactly. shot where the, it was the, the light shines through like the divide, that little, the literal divide. Um, spectacular movie. I might watch that tonight. God damn it. And it also showed like how good Iron Man is as well, which I loved, but okay, moving on. So two in the gods here. I'm oh, sorry, two in the gods here, three in the Hall of Fame. Moving on. Doctor Strange, 2016. I have in the All-Stars. I also have it in the All-Stars. I think Tier this movie, three. like again, trouble with the ending. I think Mads Mikkelsen was good. Um, I think Doctor Strange was good, a little formulaic as well. But like at the end of the day, the visuals were insane, I thought. I thought this was a little different. Batch acclaimed an uh, actor coming into the MCU. I was a big fan of this movie when it came out. Looking back on it, maybe not as good as I originally thought, but still good, still an all-star. I think it was great as a uh, debut for a character. I think they did a great job with his training and like going to Carmitage and like Tilda Swint, I think was great as the ancient one. Uh, I think also uh, not great chemistry with Christine Palmer and – Rachel McAdams that lends into the multiverse of madness, which we we're going to get to, but you're right. The visuals, it felt like this was an MCU movie that was trying to be inception and they were successful in a lot of different ways. Scott Derrickson, horror director, I think had the right elements, right. To make this movie possible. Benedict Cumberbatch is perfect as Dr. Strange. I loved his performance so much in this movie. Uh, I really do respect this movie. Uh, and it seems like a little controversial in terms of MCU, like solo movies and what the fans think. I think it's firmly in that third tier the all-star tier firmly okay i like that okay moving on i'll start here i have this one as an all-star guardians of the galaxy 2 i have it an all-star as well i think this movie is very good now i think it's whole, held back from hall of fame because like guardians one so iconic uh you're looking at some of the movies that just came out that we talked about like they're just naturally better and it's always hard following up something as iconic and just a naturally a sequel. It's just ne usually never as good. And it just it didn't have that same captured moment because we already saw that creativity in the first one. So I think because of that, I like it as an all-star. 
this is like this is like at the very fringe for me where it was going to be hall of fame i initially did take it off my hall of fame i kind of anticipated you were going to have it in the all-star level i always make the argument that is it is it better than guardians of the galaxy the initial one and like after the years go by after i first saw it i had the, the high of seeing it and like chris hemsworth and, and uh, chris pratt and the rest of the cast was saying like this is the greatest space spectacle since star wars things like that in some ways like there is some validity to what he's saying in terms of the visuals this movie visually is up there with like Thor Ragnarok with the best I think that MCU has ever looked on screen, bright, vibrant. It looks better than the first Guardians of the Galaxy in my opinion. Uh, I think Ego is a great villain, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think it did a lot for Chris Pratt's character as Star-Lord to build upon it. There was so much like uh, questioning in terms of like investigating of like what exactly is going to happen to his character after the first one uh, and seeing Kurt Russell step in there and like bring a lot of intensity to the role too. Uh, and some swag, very cool soundtrack hits as always. It's right there at the tip of the All Stars into the Hall of Fame, but we'll keep it in the All Stars. Okay, moving on. 2017 again. I have this one as a Hall of Famer. It's Spider Man Homecoming. Hall of Fame as well. Hall of I Fame as well. Michael Keaton, my like unbelievable as the villain here. Un compared to like a lot of these other villains brought his own spin to it i did and like again this is coming off of birdman right like he's on a high spotlight in 2015 like he's on a roll right now and then he gets into the mcu vulture not your prototypical villain that you think about with spider-man but he makes it his own and it works so well i really like this movie yes it's a smaller local more local Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but still connected to the MCU post Civil War with the Tony Stark elements. You could say that kind of hurts it it's in some ways, but at the end of the day, I love the high school field with this as well. Give me Spider-Man: Homecoming as a Hall of Famer. This is a different movie than like it doesn't feel the same as the rest. Like you're right, it's a high school John Hughes level Marvel movie, small in scale, but in enough where it felt like it's high stakes for the specific characters. Like for a high schooler to be taking on a task of trying to protect like items that are going from an Avengers compound, taking on a villain as powerful as like Adrian Toomes and his like technology that he's using. Uh, and then also like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man fits so well from the comics, like being translated to the screen here. It seems like they kind of get away from that later on with the MCU Spider-Man trilogy, but this is like a true comic book version of the character in my opinion uh soundtrack also low-key hits mm. but i also like when you look at like the tier below and you look at like ant-man like it just has a different feel than ant-man ant-man feels so formulaic like this has been done before so many times in the mcu like spider-man no way home was i mean home, excuse me homecoming was so refreshing and i thought it was a great entry into like the mcu and like said okay this has a lot of promise it really worked out for me uh, a lot of really strong connections to um iron man though that kind of through that kind of downgrades it a little bit yeah and like uh, one of the ways i was looking at this at this tiering is like just comparing it to where i already put in because i was going in order like what we're doing now and like i looked back and i was like all right what is in my like all-star cat like tier and i had like dr strange i had captain america first avenger thor homecoming is such a significant way better year. it's not even close to so put it in that like that tier would have been disrespectful put in the hall of fame moving on this is where I think we might have a divide. Thor Ragnarok, 2017 again. God tier. Really? I have it as a god tier. I didn't god think you were going to have it as a god tier. Totally. So, first of all, it made Chris Hemsworth relevant in this universe again. Okay? People forgot about him after Age of Ultron. He's had enough of this character. What's he do? He wants to breathe life into the character or else he's going to quit the character. Who's he bring on? He literally brings himself. He brings... Uh, Taika Waititi on set himself, that he is going to be the guy. And I think this one, the energy it gave, everyone saw that trailer and they immediately started to compare it to Guardians of the Galaxy, right? You have Hulk along with the adventure. You have the plane of Sakaar. You got Valkyrie joining the battle. Kate Blanchett's Chet's going to be the villain, right? Tom Hiddleston still has a huge role as Loki in this movie. I think it just breathed new life into the MC, not only Thor, into the MCU, and it almost gave this momentum leading into because Thor is a centerpiece for both Infinity War and 
Endgame. This gave all the momentum. The same year as Guard, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I think this gave the momentum that literally sh- like shot Marvel into the stratosphere where they would be untouched. Mm. Untouched. And it was so different from what had come before. And it, people compared it to Guardians of the Galaxy. It really was nowhere near similar. The laughs, I think, were even like, they were anteed up. They were anteed up here, and we saw Chris Hemsworth in the, as Thor in the way we wanted to see him, and it almost like was best suited. Completely agree. I, I think you summed it up perfectly. I just think the shocking thing is, when have you seen in a franchise where like they have not one, but two movies, both you could say weren't amazing, like Thor 1 in particular, but the second one being so bad that they don't ditch it, they don't try to re, like do a new character, but they give even more, like they go, you know what? We're gonna we're not gonna try to take control of this franchise. We're gonna give creative freedom to this failure of the MCU. You could say it was a failure, Thor Dark World, huge failure. You could yeah, they could have scrapped like they did with Hulk, just scrap any movies. They didn't. Instead, they leaned into it more so than ever. God like, tier. It's, it's still unbelievable. God tier. And we Moving talk on. about oh. getting away from formula, getting away from what people like expect, audiences expect. This turned everyone on their heads. And they were like, oh my God, what am I witnessing right now? Like immigrant song perfectly used. Even from that first moment where he's taking on Surtur and he's like, he's getting twirled around and he goes like, oh, wait a second. Like, and he's waiting for like to face Surtur again. It's like, that's when you knew like, this is a different thought. Different. He would different. never have done that in the first And I remember years. like, I was like, oh no, they cut his hair. Like this is we were nervous, I'm nervous, nervous, but this freaking worked out unbelievable. Gold blue, God's great, name. great chemistry between Valkyrie Tessa and Hulk. Thompson, great, just yes. un- Mark Ruffalo, Hulk, Hulk, also great. Last time yeah. Hulk was really great. Made God's some here. bold choices with Hulk. Hulk's like all of a sudden speaking instead of just saying mm. smash, you know, and people seem to respond to it. Mm. They took it a little overboard in Endgame, obviously, but. Of course. Moving on. Black Panther. Best picture nominee. Hall of Fame. I have it. I, this was interesting because culturally, like, this is a Hall of Famer, right? This is, I'm sorry, culturally, God tier. You could say it's a God tier because not only like culturally, like African American culture, black community, everything like that. Best picture nominee, the only MCU movie to ever get best picture nominee. Huge God tier. But as a movie, looking back on it, this isn't even close to like the God tiers that we have. And I think one of the things I was doing this when I had, I thought we were doing tiers like one through five and the first tier, similar to our Pixar tier had to have 10 movies. I was like, okay, I'll look at like what I would score these movies. And it just turned out that like all, almost all 10 of the movies I had were like 90 and above. And this, I don't even know if I would put it as a 90 anymore, but it's like right around a 90 for me. Hall of Fame. I, I want to rewatch it again just to see what I would give it. But, like, I'm not going to – I think it – like, I don't think it's better. Like, I don't enjoy it more, and I don't think it's better than Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think it's better than Captain America Civil War in terms of an MCU movie. Like, I, I like if I say Black Panther is better than Captain America Civil War, I mean, like, Civil War, if, like, it's got to be in the God tier, Black Panther's in the God tier. Like, it's, it, it means it means you're, too much You're opening the up universe. the tier to other movies if you put this movie in. Right. There. And like, yes, it got nominated for Best Picture. It meant a lot to the culture. Okay. Killmonger, excellent villain. And like, we're still saying it's an all time great movie. This is just shows how great this universe is by putting it in the Hall of Fame. Like it's space, a, it's a, space three. It's a, we're putting it in the same like movie as like the original Avengers, the same category as the original Avengers. You know, it's like a Spider Man Homecoming. These are like all time, all time superhero movies. So I think the, it was, it's, I think people really latched on to the phenomenon. They knew what it meant for African-American culture and I see why and everything, but I just don't have it on the same level as like Iron Man, Infinity War, Endgame. Like that meant so much to a mass of people and also was just meant so much to the universe as a whole. Yeah, this is an MCU tier, like this first and foremost. Like, yeah, I can I completely agree. Moving on. Now this movie's going in the gods here because it's my favorite, and it's, I think, the best MCU movie. It's Affinity War. The best. Next. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Solid. Tier 4. Agreed. I think people can... It's better. I think Ant-Man's better, for the record. But I think solid. it is, too. Initially, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, very funny. 
Very funny, but once again, huge villain issue. Huge, huge, huge villain issue. As I said before earlier in this podcast, people forget Lawrence Fishburne's in the MCU. People forget. It's unbelievable. Let's keep that, going. That people, character is probably going to be in Champions or whatever people, that team is. People forget Michelle Pfeiffer. It's in the MCU. That too. All right, moving on. Captain Marvel 2019. Reject. Yeah. Captain Marvel. We talked about it last pod. We talked. If you're a common listener, you know, we're not a huge fan. Feel like that was really forced upon us. Uh, I feel like people wanted to love that movie more than they actually did like the movie. Completely agree. Jude Law issues there as well. Next up, Avengers Endgame. Hall of Fame. Got here. Got here. Excuse me. Okay. Endgame's I was going to say, if when you said you had four movies in the gods here. Well, I, I, I initially like, had four. I, I added, like, Ragnarok was going back and forth, and then I put it back on there. Okay. So when you said you had four, okay, but you were, I thought you had Ragnarok out and, like, Endgame in. But when you said you had Ragnarok as a gods here, I was like, oh, my God, that means Endgame. No, is no, no, I can't do that. Like, no, no. Endgame means way too much to the culture. And iconic scenes, just you have to have that in. The best, the best like theater experience alongside Infinity War. Like the yeah. experience of Endgame is not is nothing like anyone's ever had. Like exactly. honestly, it, it has it, to be even it. Infinity War, like at the like the final battle, like that just made you want to stand up in your mind. That's the most I've wanted to stand up in my seat. Like I was so close to doing it. And like people were literally doing that in like videos I saw. Like it felt like you were at a sporting event rooting for your favorite team. Couldn't say it better myself. Next up, Far From Home, Spider Man. All star third tier. I have it as third tier too. I think coming out of the theater watching it, I have like an identical board for the most part, (laughs) which is fine. Far from home, coming out of the theater, I was like, wow, I think that was better than homecoming. I literally thought it was so good, but then after seeing it on cable and TNT so much, I've picked so many flaws with it now. And Jake G, I love Jake G. I love Jake G and I don't think I think he's if you have to pick front half or like up top tier or bottom tier only two tiers of villains MCU villains he would be in the top tier but it's not like he blew the screen away I don't think so either I think at times he's even a little bit cringy I think the first half of this movie is very cringy jokes do not hit Ned leads his relationship stuff like the high school stuff does not hit the same as the first as homecoming classic uh, it's, sequel issues I would say trying to expand the world literally travel the world classic sequel issues yeah I did, to, like, the visual effects there are some incredible moments where like Mysterio is fighting uh, Spider-Man and then like uh, like far from home Spider-Man is like trying to get over the death of Tony Stark and then, like, obviously, it has, like, the moments. Like, almost Tony Stark looms a huge shadow over the movie. Uh, almost once again, even though he's not physically there, he still has the same presence that he did in Homecoming. And then people don't want to see that as much. Like, he's just so connected to Spider-Man. It almost, like, ruins, like, the solo experience of a Spider-Man movie. Uh, yeah. So, to me, first half, similar with Nick, uh, how I felt about No Way Home, I didn't like the first half of the movie, but the second half, I think, very good. But it's no way home second half. It's just like you could argue the best second half alongside like end game. It's that good. We'll uh, get there. But next up is Black Widow. We had a couple of year lull, right? Because far from home, 2019, they took a break for the rest of 2019. Then 2020, that's when Black Widow is supposed to come out, right? COVID, wait till 2021. This is an at home release. Remember, they had this Disney Plus. It was the, that option. We did that option. Where do you have Black Widow? I feel bad doing this, but it's a reject. Wow, reject. Like, I, I, I haven't revisited it since. But, like, after I watched it, I'm like, okay, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, sometimes, like, Marvel hasn't done that great in terms of female-led projects. Like, Black Widow, like, Scarlett Johansson is so great in supplementary roles, in complementary roles, I should say, in the MCU. Uh, David Harbour, solid. I guess in this movie, Rachel Weiss also solid. Florence Pugh kind of steals the performance, steals the steals the movie. But it's the fact that like Scarlett Johansson is like second tier, second rate to Florence Pugh in her own solo project. I also think the ending of this movie was terrible. I hated what they did with Taskmaster. Taskmaster. I think it's at the top of the rejects, but that's where I got it. So again, before I was doing this, I was like, oh, limitation. I'm putting it into solid, but. 
after like recalibrating my board, moving all my five through 10 slots into the hall of fame. It's like, I have to move some into the rejects. This was my headliner for the rejects. I think this is better than captain Marvel. Yeah. But for all the reasons that you said, looking at the solids, I think that the solids do everything better than black widow for the most part. So the taskmaster twist, I think goes almost on par with like the disappointment of, uh, of, like uh, Iron Man three with Trevor Slattery, I think it's almost that Ooh, level in terms of like the disappointment for your audiences. And I think there was a lot of expectations for Marvel fans. Taskmaster like was such a badass character, and to see like how it developed at the end of that movie, it just uh, to me it was very disappointing. Big visual and effects issue in that movie too, especially the, the yeah when they're when they're in the air. It's 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 god awful. It's really bad. Embarrassing. All right, Black Widow rejects later on in the year. I think October release Shang Chi. So now, Sang Chi for me, depending how many we want to go here, I think visual effects issues as well. But moving on, I think it's an all star. Ooh, I'm okay with this. I have this at the top of the solids here, but I think it's also it's recency. Like I just haven't seen it since I saw it in theaters. I think it. You're right. Great villain. I think Simu Liu is low key great as Shang Chi. I'm excited to see what he's going to do in the future. Um, I, I maybe I have to just revisit this one. I'm totally okay. I had it in the solid realm, but if you want to put it to all star, I think I think I I think it's better let's, than Thor. Let's, let's put I think it it's better than Thor. And Thor's are we, if Thor's committed to the all star, I'm willing to put Shang Chi in the all star. Okay. Do you think let's this do, is better than Ultron? No. I don't think so either. I think Ultron is like, certainly better. I'm going to be biased. I'm going to be biased to like the Avenger team up movie. You know, it's a little different mm -hmm. there. Do you think it's, this it's is more than about Far from home. I think it's close. Really? I think it's close. I think it's close. If, I think if it's I think that close, then I think it's in the All Stars. Yeah. So All I think right. I, I do think so. Um, Far from home, I'm just not a huge fan of. I know a lot of people like that movie so much. I'm just. I don't like Spider-Man being so far away, and it just feels like it's not a Spider-Man movie. He's got the black suit or whatever. He's got, I don't know. Get okay. I don't know, I'm fine with that. Keep going. All right. This is this is this was honestly, I think one of my one of if not the toughest choice I had to do. Eternals. I was close to doing solid, but I did put it in the rejects. You did the rejects. I haven't revisited it since. Neither have I. I'm in the same boat as Shang-Chi where it's like I've seen it one time. Okay, here. So I am all for putting it in the rejects because we have four in the rejects right now. If we do five, that's an even five. Or not even, but like that's a good round top five, bottom five. Eternals was such a huge expectations and a huge failure. So yeah. rejects is I'm all in for the rejects. I'm I'm okay with it because you're right. Like Chloe Zhao coming to the director's chair, she just wins best director, best picture at the Oscars. What can she do with this Marvel landscape? What is she bringing to the table? And we get probably the most disappointing, I guess, uh, team up movie in the history of the MCU. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. I was I was I was gonna say visual effects. We expected to be amazing. There were some great visuals here, but there's also some very disappointing visuals. There's a lot of like story issues, in my opinion. A lot of like trying to hint at the universe without like set explanations that I was like, getting pissed off about. And also a debatable like villain in this movie too, and a debatable reveal with Richard Madden, Richard Madden's character. And ending, ending tough, very tough. And I just to say also, this is my fifth lowest, no, fourth lowest Marvel rated movie. Black Widow is my fifth lowest. So this like would make sense for a bottom five for myself. Like it. Now, we're at it here. We're at the events of last year. Spider-Man No Way Home. Hall of Fame. And this is firmly in the Hall of Fame. This isn't... I, reading No Way Home, yes. Huge significance. Bring in Toby back. Bring in Andrew Garfield back. But I agree with you. The first half of this movie did not flow as well as i would have liked it to i do think tom holland was good in it but you know who stole the show not spider-man it was the second spider-man who's known to have the worst spider-man movies so yeah. i think that's a huge problem i don't think that's possible to put this movie if the main character is not the best or at least 
is kind of being stoned, like stoned the us, uh, the highlights, the spotlight away. Put me in the Hall of Fame just on significance and event factor. I don't know if I'm willing to say that Garfield was better than Tom Holland here. I think Tom Holland was really good in this movie. I think it's I'm the best. Uh, I think it's stealer. the best he's ever scene been stealer. in a movie. Scene stealer. Yes. No. He definitely is the scene stealer <laughs> of that movie for sure. And I think he's my second favorite, uh, third favorite performance. Obviously, obviously like Defoe. I think right mm. there is number two for me. I like to bring Tom Holland, Defoe, and then Garfield. That might be a hot take. People love Defoe in this movie, but I love. I think Tom Holland's is the best work he's ever done. Emotional, heartfelt ending. Ending. Um, the only reason also is like talking about the significance to the MCU. We got two characters that don't have further connections to the MCU. Uh, and it's like, okay, this is more like a tribute to Spider-Man than it is the MCU itself. So it's like, okay, when you look at like the God tier, you're thinking about the greatest works within the MCU. This one has like so much fan service. And you're right. Like what we talked about earlier, it's like the Dr. Strange impact of this. I don't love like, spider-man locking away dr strange for an extended period of time in this movie like to me that's kind of like weird and i also don't love the uh the beginning of this movie there's like it seems like spider-man movies in the mcu have an issue of being very cringy to start and like almost like it's all almost like what i what i imagine captain marvel to be on a regular basis i mean i'm not no miss marvel miss marvel okay yeah that show that show i think yeah i agree with that and i think like you know you have like your you know, your quarrels. And I think COVID was a part of this. I'm thinking of Ned Leeds opening up the portals, right? I think there's a few issues like that that are in this movie that I didn't particularly love. And if you're a God's your movie, you don't make those mistakes. And it's like a G rated euphoria. Like when they're mm. like those, those, those movies. But I like the ending. I like the ending because they, you know, that was. That took some balls. Like MJ balls. also Zendaya, best performance she's had as MJ so far. Like that, like that, easily. that was that was a heart wrenching ending. To be honest, easily, easily. All right, and now we get to this year, Multiverse of Madness. I have it as a solid. I'll tell you what. I, I'll just tell you now. I have Multiverse of Madness and Love and Thunder in solid. I did the same. I think these are both for me. I had them both low sixties. I think they were solid. But the potential was there for both of them. They didn't t- tackle that. They didn't take advantage of that opportunity. But there's no way these are rejects. No, there's no way. Definitely not. Like I was close to having Love and Thunder actually in the All Star realm, just because of the Christian Bale aspect. But you're right, not in enough of the movie. It seems like it wants to be Ragnarok so bad, rather than being something different. And then Multiverse of Madness. Like the second half when Raimi takes over, it becomes a totally different movie. It seems it seems like it's also obsessed with like just making setting up the future of the MCU. I think like the it's, multiverse it's, and mm-hmm. everything like that. I agree with that. Cameo filled, cameo, cameo focused or impact like uh, reliant, I would say. I think that was a big part of that as well. But looking at our solid category, just to kind of read those off and then we'll go, I'll read it, the rest here. Iron Man 2. Iron Man 3, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Multiverse of Madness, Love and Thunder. Sequel City. Except Ant-Man. That's what I was going to say. Is Ant-Man the worst origin movie? No. Black Widow, Captain Marvel. But, like, it's just Hulk. interesting to see that. It's just like, we and our list, it's like we gave homage to, like, these team-ups, to the origins. But then again, like, we have Ant-Man and Solid. Black Widow and Captain Marvel. That is so brain. not memorable. It's like you could just throw them to the side. Like you rather watch like the first Iron Man or like the Iron Man where he is the leader of the Avengers, arguably next to um Steve Rogers. Like you rather watch that than Iron Man 2 or Iron Man 3. Like who just watches Iron Man 2? Who does that? Who's gonna do that? Who just turns on Ant Man and the Wasp? I get it was on Netflix, so maybe you did it then, but look for Love and Thunder, I will turn on again. I will reassess that movie. Uh, and then Multiverse of Madness, I have been tempted to watch that again, but I have not done so. I haven't done it either. I think that makes it solid. Like the rest of the movies, the all-stars, I have revisited all of them, including Shang-Chi. I have revisited, but I don't know if I'll do it again. <laughs> but I do, <laughs> but I've done it twice. So I think that counts for something compared to the solids. But let's go through them real quick. God tier. F- five five movies. Iron Man. 
Winter Soldier, Ragnarok, Infinity War, Endgame. Hall mm-hmm. of Fame, we have six movies. The Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Civil War, Homecoming, Black Panther, No Way Home. All Stars, we have seven movies. Thor, Captain America, First Avenger, Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Far From Home, Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. Solid, we have six movies. Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, Rejects, we have five movies. The Incredible Hulk, Dark World, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Eternals. Can I say this? I'm very confident in our Rejects. Yeah. No, I I think I'm very confident in this whole list. I, I You're going to have people... Like argue Guardians of the Galaxy and No Way Home and Civil War, like anything people can argue. Panther. Any people will argue any of the Hall of Fames that go in the God tier. Anyone you said Black Panther, yes, Homecoming probably not, but like the rest of those people are going to argue like God tier. There's got to be some exclus- exclusivity at the top. We made that mistake with Pixar. Um, we got to make it lonely at the top. It's hard to get there, right? They got a mountain to climb, and uh, I like how we have this because like every time we get a new MCU release, we got Connor Forever. Is the next MCU movie. Where is it going to fit in this tier? We can continuously update it. I think we did a great job. One last question here, Doctor. If you had to take away one of our God tiers, which would you take away to the Hall of Fame? Ragnarok. It's interesting. Like I, I was thinking Iron Man, to be honest. I was thinking Iron Man. But I like, think Ragnarok's better, but Iron Man's so influential because it's the first yeah. and best performance Tony yeah. Stark, probably Robert Downey Jr. Yes, so solo you, movie. Are you allowed to take it away? Yes, like it's like to me, like you, the only like, origin movie we have in the God tier. Yeah, like uh, to me, it's like it's just it's it's about it's all about it's about respect. That's what it's about. It's about respect. Like, yeah, and to be honest, I've rewatched Ragnarok way not just because of your difference, way more than Endgame because I think Ragnarok is overall better movie. But God dang it. Endgame has to be in the gods here. Endgame's longer, and if it's like such a time, it's it's such an investment. If I'm watching that, like I feel, I I like to do a double feature personally. If I'm like snowed in, I'll watch Infinity War than Endgame. That's like I, I feel weird if I just watch Endgame. You know, I gotta mm-hmm. watch Infinity War and then I watch it. You know, mm-hmm. double feature or I do back to back nights or something. I find when I go to the gods here, the movie I find myself watching, I don't have cable. Right, the movie I put on more than any other one is Infinity War. Yeah, and Ragnarok. Same Infinity War is my number one. Always, I, I don't know if that will ever be Eclipse. Infinity War is and there, almost perfection. And there's always moments where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna rewatch every MCU movie. And uh, where do you start? Iron Man. Since so a lot of times I watch Iron Man, just like literally, movie. it's the Dark Knight and then Infinity War for superhero movies for me. That's how much I love that movie. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm in the same boat. And, and the Guardians of the Galaxy was, took a lot for me to not put him in the God tier. Took a lot. Proud of you, man of integrity. All right, that's gonna do it for our tiers of the Marvel cinematic universe and that's going to do it for our episode a long one for you folks hope you stayed all the way through make sure you're following wherever you're listening right now and make sure you follow us on social media whether you're uh make sure you're following us on twitter and instagram uh we got some great graphics from ricky flex great clips from dr o and we got our youtube pumping right now make sure you're staying tuned you subscribe to the tube uh yeah and make sure uh so later this week we're going to do recaps for the boys finale all right, and we're also going to recap Stranger Things. We also have the checkup this week. Okay, a lot of things to get to. Right, coming off Fourth of July weekend, we only had a one episode week last week. We're back on the grind, and we're here for all you listeners. That's going to do it for episode 123 uh, for Doctor and Ricky Flex. Until next time, we will smell you. <laughs>